Hello. How, how you guys doing? James here. I had to adjust my, my, my settings just man. My, that, when I get that, sun, that morning sun, it gets coming on through and uh, kind of kind of put a blind spot. So it's like I'm like, oh, uh, uh, I'm glad the sun is out, but I just, I just hope that of course later on it's going to get cold cold as cold and rainy anyway um, probably wondering what this video is going to be about this video is going to be about people who are entitled people who are urban and entitled you know in America we live in different parts of the country and the only way we get to know people, to see people, is through, t and so, is through television and through social social media network and things like that. Most of us, you know, come from different settings, from the suburbs to the urban. It's the suburbs. Some people come from the city. Some people come from the country, and that's what makes America unique. How, and. What I'm about to say to you, it doesn't apply to one, to all, but I'm going to give you the signs. On, you can tell when someone have really been around a demographic of people. And it's their first time. And the only time they go away, when they move away, they go to college, they go to the service, they job, to, you know, they, go, they, they get, go to a different city, they go to a different job. And like anybody, it's, it's a bit of adjustment and so I say uh, I say this you have a lot of people that never culturally live around other people and so they go by what they call hearsay they go by people who you know, for example if someone is white and they, they, they live out and, and they have a well privileged life and let's say they're not a the type of white person that been like lived in the backwoods of Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky. They have a sense of poverty. They 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 probably can connect a little bit more as far as poverty with all people. But but when you have a white person that never understood that their parents had a pretty decent job, it's not to no fault of their own, but they never really been around They've never been through the struggle. They, they don't know what the consequences is. They don't know. Some don't. Some of them don't know that. But they don't. They live by what they see, and they try to be in their own way, do the right thing. But what when you got some white people that come from that from the hood, that live among among black people, they cool. Even some people, believe it or not, that live in rural areas, because there's a poverty sense out there. Now, their poverty sense is similar to ours. However, you know, with the you know, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and things like that. And sometimes you get people come from dysfunctional families. Yes. And it, it can be pretty dreadful. And it can be not. But some people who never experienced something like that, for a, a, a suburban person, like a rural or a city person, all they know is like, all they worst tra traumatic is someone to give them enough attention. They they used to be handed most of the things in life. They're, you know, they have, a, in their household, they know everybody expresses themselves a, a different way, a, you know, and they're allowed to be free and and their parents, because they don't want their parents being strict like they was, and so we have kind of this liberated way of of, of thing that this brings me to the story of what just pearly things is really about. A lot of a lot of black people didn't, didn't see this coming. She's that top, that that she come from that type of environment. She can't. Did, um, did, you know, there's some dysfunctional things probably in her family. Yeah, there's some things. But it's not like some hard, hardship things as, as black people and some, some poor white people go through. 
that really go through some things. That really go through, I mean, what I'm talking about probably is discrimination to the point that it, it, it affects the home life. It affects affects all different areas of drama. But I'm going to stop, I'm going to, I'm, I had to bring an introduction to, to bring me to the, the narrative of what I'm talking about. And I've seen this throughout my life because, you know, living in this inner city and my mom and being a single mother and having a job that makes a decent amount of money, when they go out in the suburbs, it's a whole different mindset out there. It's, when you're in the city, you know, everything's tough, rough, it's, it's, it's in your face. Suburban people, they live in, well, we, we, you see on the 90210, that's why suburban people can relate to that because it, like, you remember them sh old shows like this? Because the reason why we had to t tell like this, and you saw those old movies, and I don't know if some of you ever, like, uh, um, Sam Elmo's Fire, and, and it shows the movies from back in the 80s, and it was predominantly white. So, and they show you like, the Home Alones and things like that. And when you watch, when you sit back, there, you everybody, it, it's, it's the, um, their American story. Black people, many too many black people got that kind of American story. So, white people, when they when they come from, they can, they can connect to that. You know, the show like Friends. I'm I'm, I'm painting a picture here. Uh, bear with me. I'm painting a picture. So, when they come into people like just Pearly, things come into environment. They don't. They can't really can't connect because they come from that friends that type of environment. Now I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a little bit of this video, and uh, I'm gonna play a little bit of his, his video uh, if I can find it here. Uh, my TV. I'm gonna take take you into their site, their mindset of what it is. I'm not going to use too much of this video. Copyright 1976 for teaching purposes only. Don't act like us. That's why I don't. This episode. Let's go, let's go. But before we do a little bit of housekeeping, let me uh, get tuned in with the chat, see who we got in the building. If you would like to support the platform, likes are free as always. And if you would like to support it further, you can do so via Cash App or PayPal. Um, actually, let me put the little uh, overlay. Bam. There we go. Let's see who we got in the building today before we jump into this footage. Says her mother got that same long, hard face. Man. Mm -mm. Pacey Pearl getting a spanking. There's another publicity stunt. Yeah, we got Sherry in the building. What's good, Sherry? Nice to see you, the coldest. Max, the tax collector. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. And guys, I don't know if you know, but I've been going on them so hard. I've been been beating them into submission so effectively to where I gotta take a victory lap. Friday is my victory lap day. You know, let's just call it wind down Fridays, okay? We're just gonna take it nice and slow on this Friday evening. I'm gonna see uh, how much content of hers is, uh, how much content of hers it takes to uh, to get my blood boiling and, and get me shouting and hooting and hollering. But ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna try to keep it cool, calm, and collected. We're gonna try not to get so upset when we see this dumbass racist broad spill this vile, vile hatred. Yeah, so how would reparations work with the black slave owners? Would they own reparations or? Because it wasn't about race. No, they got their slavery and they're like, oh, they got, sorry, their freedom, not their slavery. <laughs> they got their freedom and they're like, oh, I know how to run a plantation. Let me start one. Really? I wonder if she learned that from her mama. I wonder if that was her mama or her daddy that told her that. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Let's get into the footage, y'all. But before we get into the footage, I gotta give y'all a little teaser. I gotta let y'all know what you're gonna stick around to see. I gotta let y'all know what the climax is, y'all. I'm kinda crazy, so sometimes I like to have my dessert before I have my main course. I'm just a little bit crazy like that. Pearl's over here bashing modern woman, talking about feminism this, feminism that, right? Right? When her mama, uh, was fucking and hopping on anything that moves when she was 17 or 18, got herself pregnant, and uh, and what happened? When I was going to have an abortion, I thought about it. I did think about it. Because mm -hmm. it's easy, right? It's an easy button, and nobody knows, and it just goes away. And 
and then actually I still have the card hanging in my office from the, the lady at, um, I guess it was a crisis pregnancy center that I went to, and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I don't know, she just, she knew better, she saw through the 17 year old or 18 year old at the time, mm-hmm. person that was there probably making the, you know. Wait, what did she do? Well, she just kept asking me why and, you know, what, what were my reasons, and I didn't have good reasons. So you want to talk shit about modern woman this, modern woman that, feminism this, feminism that. And your mama was a thought rocket at 17, 18 years old, contemplating aborting the baby and had to get talked out of it because she realized after talking to somebody with a mind that she was going to abort her baby for no reason. And that's your mama? So for you to speak all of this traditional values and modern woman this and y'all are hoes and y'all for the streets and yada, 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 you talk about your mama. <laughs> oh, those who live in glass houses, right? Those who live in glass houses shall not throw stones, they say, yet the hypocrisy continues. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tease you a little bit. I'm going to tease you a little bit. Her mother didn't get the abortion, but her mother did something else to that baby that's damn near just as bad. And her father has a lot of regret over what her mother did to that baby. Her father wants it to be well known that what the mother did to that baby was the mother's decision. The father didn't want the mother to do that to that baby. But it was her decision for sure. But it was her decision for sure. What was her decision for sure? What did Pearl's mother do to a baby she had at 17 or 18 that wasn't abortion, but it's still so bad, it's still so critical to where her father is looking like he has pain in his eyes, like he has remorse on his face, and he wanted to, it to be known. It was it was her decision. It, it, it wasn't my decision. It was her decision. But it was her decision for sure. But it was her decision for sure. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, stick around because we will figure out just where a pearl comes from, just what kind of woman Pearl's own mother is, and yeah, we got ultra receipts. This is Wind Down Fridays, y'all. I'm taking a victory lap on exposing these clowns. <laughs> Zilla says the pappy looking bears, and you know what? Hold up. I gotta get classy with it. I got my red wine and whatnot. This is Wind Down Fridays. I need a little bit of music. I need a little something to, a little something to rock to. Hold on, wait. Let me, let me see if I can get, get a little background music going for us. There we go. A little something, something. Hopefully it's not too loud. If the music uh, is louder than my voice, just put a one in the chat and I'll fix the audio levels. But let's see what the chat got to say because her mama sound like a thought. <laughs> her mama sound like her whole family need to be on an episode of Jerry Springer, right? So for a pro to be out here preaching traditional values and yada, 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 y'all, I know I'm teasing you right now. I know I'm not telling you exactly what her mother did to that child that was so terrible that as her father struck him with such remorse. I know I'm not telling you right now, but guys, listen. You have to know this. When you find out what the mother did to that child, it's gonna... It's really gonna have an extra an extra layer of ratchetness to it. It's really gonna have an extra layer of just selfishness to it because think about it this way let me go ahead and pause the music pearl comes from a dual parent household pearl's mother was with pearl's father when they were 17 or 18 and had this baby so when y'all find out what pearl's mother did to this baby you preach about such traditional values pearl but your father wouldn't step up and take care of his child but your mother wouldn't step up and take care of her child? Her mother was 17 or 18 years old in college, so your mother chose a career over at the child? Wait, are you telling me I'm gonna review some footage here that shows that Pearl's own mother forsake a child for no damn good reason at all? Talk about being a modern woman. Talk about being, um, What does future say? She belongs to the streets. Ooh, she ain't got no good reason for what she did, and it took a random stranger at some kind of nonprofit organization to try to convince her not to abort the first she wanted to kill the baby. 
first she was just like, I'm gonna I'm just kill the motherfucker. I'm 17, 18, I'm living my best life. I got my man, but we don't want this motherfucker. We don't want this little bastard. Let me, let's just take it out real quick. But then somebody had to step her away from the ledge, and she still did something real, real bad to this poor, innocent soul. And we gonna get into it. When I was gonna have an abortion, I thought about it. I did think about it. Because it's easy, right? It's an easy button, and nobody knows, and it just goes away. And and then, actually, I still have the card hanging in my office from the, the lady at... Um, I guess it was a crisis pregnancy center that I went to, and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I don't know, she just, I'd be looking embarrassed she knew better, she saw through the 17-year-old or 18-year-old at the time, mm-hmm. person that was there probably making the, you know. Wait, what did she do? Well, she just kept asking me why and, you know, what, what were my reasons, and I didn't have good reasons. Damn, you didn't have good reasons, huh? didn't have good reasons let's see what the chat has to say about this because we just warming up y'all i'm just i'm just having a little fun we we just warming up i got some guests in the backstage we're gonna bring up we're going all live out tonight this is crazy let me see what the chat has to say smash the like button the cynical one says but she's talking about traditional values and modern woman and shit yeah when she comes from a modern woman when she comes from a thought rocket she comes from a woman that deserves her own segment on Maury or Jerry Springer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Sure, it says probably a black man. No, it was Pearl's husband. Pearl's, uh, Pearl's father was the father of the mother's baby. They were together. It was a dual parent household, and still she did some Grammy shit to this baby, so that really speaks to the psyche. It's not like she was a single mother. It's not like she couldn't take care of the child. So for her to do what y'all gonna find out she did to this sweet little innocent baby, it's gonna rub y'all the wrong way. It's gonna rub y'all the wrong way. Yeah, her daddy up there choking up on the podcast. Her daddy choking up thinking about it. Had to make sure to give y'all the disclaimer. It was her decision. But it was her decision for sure. But it was her decision for sure. Mm-mm. It was her decision for sure. We're going to get into the decision. The cold that said, get the likes up, everybody needs to see this. <laughs> she had the said that baby turned out to become Candace Owens. <laughs> you think Pearl's mama cheetah was a black man and then the baby was Candace Owens? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Mm-mm-mm. Come on. Trailer Park vibes, yeah. So when Pearl talks about coming from this affluent and well-off and rich family, this is how rich folks get down? Okay. Okay. And yeah, B-Flower, nice to see you. It's up and it's done. Dakota says Pearl's mama is a transformer. I mean, we see where she gets her looks from. And yes, it was his kid. It was his kid, and he still allowed her to do this to this child instead of manning up and taking care of the baby. Instead of, uh, it's sad, y'all. It's sad. And then, and then, spoiler alert, they go on to have 10 kids. Pearl has a family of a total of 10 kids, but when y'all hear about what they did to the firstborn, when y'all hear about the curse of the firstborn, oh my God. Matter of fact, I think it was a son too, so I don't know if they made a pact with the devil on some um, on some rumple skillson type shit. And, and you know, part of the contract was that you gotta forsake your firstborn son. I don't know what it is, but they, they did some strange things to the firstborn. Ooh. Mike T mm-hmm. went deep, deep on Gemini this one. says he oh, wonders oh, why oh, did oh, he marry oh, this oh, guy oh, yeah. He has regrets. Ooh, Mike T went deep, on, deep on this one, boy. Woo. But it was our decision. says mom went from a man to man she was a lesbian <laughs> Dakota says her mama is inbred straight from the midwest damn 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 mm. says her parents did come up poor so they could be trailer people they look like they all fit into an episode of honey boo boo I mean I don't know I don't know Mm-mm-mm. yes mediation in motion hold up so Hannah's parents weren't even married before they had sex so according to her stupid and unreasonable ideologies not even her own mama is a traditional woman. Yes, that's what we're going to talk about here today. It'd be different if Pearl came from a traditional household, and that explains why she thinks the way she does at such a young age. But when you come from a thought rocket, who's having babies out of wedlock at 17 and shit, and then you want to turn around and act like your mother Teresa, well, now we know you're just grifted. Yeah, mama was out there getting that purr clapped, getting that big purr clapped, okay? I don't know if it was a 
the seventies or the eighties. I don't know if her mama was part of the uh, the free love movement. I don't know what it was. Come on. Happy Life says, where did they leave the child? Somewhere in foster care? We gonna get into it. But they did some strange things with the firstborn. Tilo Brown says they raised a white supremacist. <laughs> The coach just says mama was getting her cheeks busted in a single wide. She a runner, she a runner, she a track star. Facts. Facts. And no, Pearly Banks is not that child. I think Pearly is like the middle child out of ten. So we're talking about someone who's older than Pearly. Pearly would do anything for content. That's the point exactly. She'll do anything for content. Even expose her goddamn family. She'll even expose her mama for clout. Oh lord, a person who will expose their mama for clout. person who'll put your mama in the hot seat and turn on a camera and say action oh what they will do for a bag like that. what they will do for a bag Mm-mm-mm. come on now Mm-mm. Zilla says this then turned into an episode of the young and the restless <laughs> yeah are we supposed to feel bad for them now hey come on yeah Gemini is up in the stock I got my foot on the pedal. There's no other way. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get into it. I think I got caught up with the chat for the most part. Go ahead and smash the like button if you haven't already done so. And let's start reviewing some of this footage, y'all. Let's see what Pearl's mama has to say. Let's see what Pearl's mama has to say. Gonna have an abortion. I thought about it. I did think about it. Optimized over the years by dad throwing you off a tube. <laughs> launching. Launching. I don't know. The worst one I ever got was Austin was driving and he knocked the wind out of me so badly that I, I couldn't get out of the water for two minutes and he dived in because he thought I was going to drown. That's what the life jackets are for. Yeah. Uh, how about Lake Michigan when you kicked your... Oh, yeah. Okay. Never mind. He has had a few. <laughs> that was like the most scariest. We need to go back to Lake Michigan. That was fun. Yeah. Lots well, waves. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> not with the boat. I'm retired. Adam, no, it's okay. <laughs> Adam, what's your favorite memory? Still would be the farm. I mean, I had the most fun there. And I would love to figure out whether all these children are biologically related because that one looks different than that one who looks different than that one. I mean, none of them really look alike. Pearl looks like her mama, but uh, I, I, think, I think the father needs to do a DNA test. I think a DNA test is definitely warranted growing up. Amelia, what about you? Building forts in the basement. Oh, yeah. I that forgot was, about that. I remember us getting that, like, tiny, like, I don't know what kind of TV it was, but it was really old, and we'd play Super Smash Bros. on the Wii on it. No, the big, one the big old box TV that had a, a DVD oh, with a VHS, the VHS player yeah, in it. Yeah. And the base for gaming would always be under the air hockey table. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you would set up too much when you, like, want a game, you'd, like, bang your head and want yep. to we used the weights to do all the blankets. Yeah. I used to wonder why. Oh, so we used those weights. <laughs> Man, talk about some Brady Bunch, Little House on the Prairie type shit. Uh, she ain't the only one who's tasty as a motherfucker. Goddamn, goddamn, goddamn. If there was any more natural light in that room, they'd be all flushed out. Somebody asked <laughs> And then mom would yell at us and we'd be like, I don't know why they're there. Adam <laughs> did it. <laughs> yeah, mom, I didn't break that vase either. <laughs> Um, can I ask you guys about Greg or no? No, I don't want to talk about no, Greg. No, I'm talking, I'm talking <laughs> to mom and dad. Um, could- oh, damn. Guys, do you see how we're going to get into such a sore and sensitive topic of discussion here this evening? I don't know if y'all caught that. I'm pretty sure the firstborn, the firstborn son that they did some real Grammy shit to, His name is Greg. And Pearl just said, do you guys want to talk about Greg? And one of the brothers said, no, I don't want to talk about Greg. He said that real sad, like, no, I don't want to talk about Greg. And then Pearl said, no, no, not you, mom and dad. So she gonna put her parents on the hot seat to talk about Greg. Hold up, I gotta run that back. That was so sad. Maybe it's because of the red wine, but goddammit, I just felt a little something in my spirit. The way he said, no, I don't want to talk about Greg. What happened to Greg? These white folks be having some deep family secrets and shit. They want to seem holier than thou. 
get a YouTube channel with a million subscribers and act like they are the moral compass of the world, gonna tell you you're modern and da-da-da-da-da when you come from a goddamn thought rocket. And it seems like that thought rocket had a lot of regret, had a lot of things weighing heavy on our heart, really wanted forgiveness from the creator because apparently after they got wealthy, they started adopting a bunch of kids. Oh Lord, these white folks think that they can buy their way into heaven. Let me repent. Let me start adopting some kids to try to make up for what I did to my firstborn. Make it make sense, y'all. But let me rewind that clip back real quick and just hear how sad it is when they bring up Greg. I mean, I had the most fun there growing up. Amelia, what about you? Building forts in the basement. Oh yeah, I that was forgot a, about that. I remember us getting that like tiny, like I don't know what kind of TV it was, but it was really old, and we'd play Super Smash Bros what? on the Wii on it. No, the big, the big old box TV that had a, a DVD. Oh, the VHS. That's the thing. Yeah. And real quick, um, Holly Selassie, um, let's not be racist and xenophobic. Celine does not have to get out of here just because she is Caucasian. Celine has been a viewer of the channel, has contributed with constructive commentary. So let's not ostracize people just because they appear to be white in their icon photo. If they said something out of pocket, that's a different thing, but I don't think she, she's saying anything out of pocket in the chat. So, so let's relax. Boy, chess player. Yeah, right, boys. Yeah. And the base for gaming would always be under the air hockey table. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you would set up too much when you like want a game, you'd like bang your head on one yep. and like, wait. Hey, I ain't even going to lie. Uh, men in the chat, put a one in the chat. Um, I kind of want to do uh, do a fact check and figure out the age before I say this, but uh, but but the girl in the middle of thing, <laughs> the girl in the middle of thing. If only Pearl got the thickness of her sister right there, then Pearl could have got a million subscribers without buying a bunch of token Africans. Oh lord, oh lord. I don't know. I don't know if it's just the way the legs is crossed. Mm -mm -mm. Pearl didn't get the good genes. <laughs> Use the Arby. weights to <laughs> do all the blankets. Yeah. I used to wonder why. Oh, so we use those weights. <laughs> and now uh, this is not a, a, fa a, fa a panel of random people. This is her family. All ten of her siblings. Yes. Me Flower says hills have eyes type people. Yeah. <laughs> and JML for real. Helly was like, you, you colonize her, you pale face, get out of here. <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. This is the white people watch me too. Relax, relax. Uh uh uh. <laughs> I used to, and then mom would yell at us and we'd be like, I don't know why they're there. Adam <laughs> <Yeah>. did it. <laughs> yeah, mom, I didn't break that vase either. <laughs> um, can I ask you guys about Greg or no? No, I don't want to talk about no, Greg. No, I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> Damn. No, I don't want to talk about Greg. Mom and dad. Aww. And then somebody says, oh. Pearl, how are you gonna expose your family like this? How are you gonna put your mama and your daddy and your sister and your sister and your brother and your brother and your sister and however many more of them? <laughs> I don't know if some of them are cousin brothers or what the hell is going on with the Hills Have Eyes arrangement that they have there. Y'all yeah, know they're from the Midwest, so we'll mm -hmm. just leave it at that. Yes. Because um, um, a lot of people had questions, because I always tell the story, because I'm pro-life. And for anybody who's just now tuning in like Celine. Greg is her mother's firstborn son that they did some strange things with. I'm just exposing, I'm just shining a light on the fact that Pearl preaches all this traditional family values, and we gonna learn that her family is far from traditional. We gonna learn that her mother was having babies out of wedlock at 17 and doing some strange things, not taking care of her responsibilities. So it's real hypocritical for Pearl to act holier than thou and act like she's the the moral compass on tradition when she comes from a Jerry Springer type household. <laughs> um, so I always tell the story like for me it's a like because you guys gave a kid up for adoption it's really hard for me to like be pro-choice because like I saw him grow up and like become a person. How how did you guys come to that decision? Like that's got to be the hardest decision you've ever made right? So you're telling me that her mother and father are together, unmarried, have a child, and choose to give it up for adoption. Oh my God, that speaks to the psyche of these people. That speaks to the psyche. They wanna talk shit about uh, single black mothers. They wanna talk shit about the um, non-nuclear family of you know uh, disparaged communities. Y'all were together and still chose to abandon your responsibility and give your baby up. And a matter of fact, let you tell it, first, you thought about murking that little motherfucker. 
First you thought about taking it out, and then you were like, no, I don't have to take it out. Let me just, let me just give it away. When I was going to have an abortion, I thought about it. I did think about it. Because it's easy, right? It's an easy button, and nobody knows, and it just goes away. And and then, actually, I still have the card hanging in my office from the, the lady at, uh, I guess it was a crisis pregnancy center that I went to. And, and um, you know, I don't know if she just... She knew better. She saw through the 17-year-old or 18-year-old at the time mm -hmm. person that was there probably making the, you know. Wait, what did she do? Well, she just kept asking me why and, you know, what, what were my reasons, and I didn't have good reasons. And she didn't have good reasons. If you didn't have good reasons to kill the baby, what good reasons did you have to give the baby up? I think you also didn't have any good reasons to give it up. I think you and the father, who was Pearl's dad, could have just taken care of your responsibility. Come on now. Come on. Mm -mm -mm. I've got a son, four years old. I never thought about giving him up for adoption. And you can see the painful look in Pearl's father's face. You can see the remorse. You can see he went out of his way to give a disclaimer to everybody, hey, I didn't want to do this. It was the mother's choice. But it was her decision for sure. But it was her decision for sure. Damn, shout out to Jessica. Jessica says, Pearlie was projecting her mama's thought behavior and throwing that rage on black women. Literally exactly what the black manosphere does. Most of them have single mothers. Facts. As T says, the parents are trying to compensate. The parents are trying to compensate putting the firstborn up for adoption by having and adopting a bunch of kids. I gotta drop a bomb for that one. Look at how they try to pay for atonement for them. So, you know when you give a baby up for adoption, I don't think you can come back like years later and be like, hey, I want my baby back. So you gave your baby away. You regret the decision. So to try to balance your karmic scales, you adopt a bunch of kids that aren't your own, but you wouldn't take care of your own. Make it make sense. Make it make sense, y'all. This is sad, and this is where where Pearl gets her beliefs and her values from. So when she's preaching that traditional shit to y'all, Come on, come on, let's see what the chat has to say. Her exposing her family on Front Street and the boyfriend, yeah, come on. Mm -mm. Look at the look on the dad's face. Mm. Come on. This is sad. Yeah, that's that white people love. Why give the baby up for adoption? Because she wanted to keep being a thought, I guess. Because she'd rather continue going to college, I guess. She put her career over her family, I guess. But then later on, she want to adopt a bunch of babies to make up for it. Okay. 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 Make it make sense. I think, um, first of all, I'm proud that you're pro-life because I think, I just want to say that because I think that in this generation, there's so much pressure to not be. So I just want to say that. Go you. Um, but, um, you know, you look back 35 years later, you know, 33 years later, I guess it is, and you look at the situation and, you know, had any one of many factors been differently, maybe we would have chose differently. But I had grown up my whole life attending pro-life rallies with my mom. And, you know, like I loved kids so, so much. Every, every person knows I'm like every other photo that I take is with a baby, right? So, so. If you love kids so much, then why were you contemplating killing your kid even though you say you had no good reason to? When I was going to have an abortion, I thought about it. I did think about it. Because it's easy, right? It's an easy button, and nobody knows, and it just goes away. And and then, actually, I still have the card hanging in my office from the, the lady at, uh, I guess it was a crisis pregnancy center that I went to. And, and um, you know, I don't know. She just... She knew better. She saw through the 17-year-old or 18-year-old at the time mm -hmm. person that was there probably making the, you know. Wait, what did she do? Well, she just kept asking me why and, you know, what, what were my reasons, and I didn't have good reasons. And look at how sad her dad looks. For me, you know, it just had to do with the fact that he didn't need to pay for, you know, what, what, most people would call him my own my mistake. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't that, and that he's a human, and like Stop who are we minute. to decide when you know when life begins? And so to me that was that was it. And you know, was it hard? It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And um, you know, and every single day, 
Man, and look how they try to twist the narrative. You giving up on your responsibilities was so hard for you. Oh, guys, oh my gosh. Does anybody have a baby violin we can play? Does anybody have a baby violin? I guess I'll just have to... Don't stop right here. That's crazy. Um, I'm going to go to this next video. And this is going to be kind of a... Yes, it does take money to make money in trading. But what if someone else provided you with the trading just give you a good idea of a $100,000 funded like. account? Her family like. Because they don't want you to date somebody else. But they're hurt because they're basically count... Hold on.
but the fact that all of a sudden black men are involved somehow there isn't a genuine reason to love black men so many americans minds are still so colonized and still so indoctrinated by racial pseudoscience from hundreds of years ago is astounding there is so much work that needs to be done like people cannot fathom the fact that i could love a black man for something aside from his body can't fathom the fact that i genuinely enjoy being around black men a lot of the times when i'm with white men i feel unseen i feel more objectified because i feel like white men don't understand me as a person as much as a black man would because at least black men understand what it's like to be like sexualized and objectified so there's some level of understanding although it's completely different there's still i feel like greater empathy that i experience between myself and a black man than with me and a white man just based off my personal dating history the black men that i have dated have been the most genuine kind people like there are reasons that i could prefer to date people that aren't just based off their bodies and the fact that folks can't process that is like y'all really don't view black men as anything else than a body also these people say that i'm stealing black men away like they don't have autonomy in their decisions the three for me only at chili's <coughs> serves up bottomless drinks bottomless chips and salsa and a classic old also these people say that i'm stealing black men away like they don't have autonomy in their decisions and it's so sad to me because there have been white women that ha- have come to me and said i was thinking about dating black men but i'm scared of what the white community will think or i'm scared of being judged by white people and it's like that is so sad like black men are already the most terrorized villainized people in our country and the fact that they aren't allowed to have genuine love towards them or it's not even understood that they could possibly be lovable people is insane so yeah this is why i'm so passionate about it because like literally like white people refuse to talk about these things and it's like if we continue to just be silent on things because we're afraid we're going to be a bad person for slipping up somehow like nothing's going to change go ahead and let me know what you think about what she said down in the comment section because that's what we do here we have conversations so go ahead and share your thoughts down in the comment section so this got a lot of people's reaction so i'm going to split this into two parts okay so this got a lot of people's reaction black men were reacting to this like oh this white woman loves them and black women were reacting to a white woman talking about how she loves them and how white is in trouble so um, let's see what black women has to say to this white woman and they'll come back and talk the fact that i can't come on here and say that i love black men without there being an entire uproar okay sweetheart this is the thing you can like who you want to like, right? But like sometimes it's just so cliché and that is what is outside the norm. That has nothing to do in my opinion with just white supremacy and how people see black people, uh, black men. But because it's repetitious to even black men constantly saying that they're dating outside their race or you know passport bros etc 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 it just gives this negative connotation to a lot of the problem that is the problem within entire indoctrination all over the world okay um that's one thing but two is is that why do you ever why why is it ever necessary to declare that though Right, so like if you have a group of men and you're not sitting with your girlfriends and having like a casual conversation, like why is it necessary to declare the type of men that you like? So for example, if I'm having a conversation with my girlfriends and we're out having drinks and we're just casually talking about the type of men that we like to date, 
then in that moment, in that setting, yes, it makes sense to say, you know what, I like him tall, I like him dark, I like him handsome. Like, I'll date a Matthew McConaughey type of dude, but I prefer to date this type of guy. You know, it's it's okay when it's casual conversation, but it almost seems to be like a thing that you guys say to kind of lure the black men in. But a lot of times what you're not realizing, the type of black men that you're luring in, however, are not the ones that are qualified. They're not bona fide type of men. They're not the type of men that's going to gravitate towards you and come in with respect, their own income, responsibility, understanding the, the dynamics of women and, men, uh, women and men. No, they're gravitating towards you because now you're coming off as a weak woman. So when a white person responds to it, they might say it in a different way, but at the end of the day, we all see things differently just in different for different reasons in different ways. Okay, so I think that's the reason why you probably more than likely getting backlash. I didn't go look at the video because I didn't care to look at it. I just was listening to your statement when you said that, like, when I come up in here and I talk about me liking black men and things like that, you don't have to tell us all that, though. That's the problem. Like, baby, if that's your preference, that's your preference. Right. I guess what my only question is, is that right. why do you, when I always hear sure. women say, and I guess I'm a little bit older, so I understand that when you say that you like a group of men, it's putting yourself in a box and it's leaving, it's not leaving you enough room to really find true love when right. you put yourself in a box. That's so true. I used to be the girl to say I would never date outside my race, but that would again be limiting you on finding true The fact that I can't come on That's here true. and say that I love black men without there being an entire uproar. Hey, Shane, how you doing? You can say that you love black men, but it better be legit. I mean, it better be legit. Love them because of the fact they need the soul to love. Love them for the fact that they need to be um, hugged, cared for. And I'm not saying that black men don't get love at home or even at their jobs, wherever the case may be. But let it be genuine. Y'all be doing it for clout. Y'all, white women do it for clout. White women do it for... I love you, black men. It don't mean a lot. They, they don't need no meaning that's, behind it. That's true. Not one. No, not one. That's true. A lonely friend of Jesus. That's true. And not a soul to care. Young. Yeah. If you meant it, it's fine. If you don't mean it, don't do it. Right. You know, it's almost the same thing as uh, if that's you don't have enough nice to say, don't say it at all. It's supposed to say for like that. Because, yes, black women and other people, they have the same thing demographic are going to come behind you and going to correct you, which is we should, because we do love our black men genuinely. We do appreciate our black men genuinely. And I know a lot of black men don't think that, but that's because it's in their head, not so much of us. Be honest on that one. That's in their mind. But if you don't mean it, sweetheart, go for it. But if you won't do that shit for some clout, know what's going to come behind it, because it's going to be a whole stampede. And it's going to be one. Mm-hmm. It's going to be 7,000, 100,000, you name it. It's going to be a whole group. Because mm-hmm. we don't play about our men and women and children. Do you know what we had to get through? Baby, do you know how black people had to get through pains and aches and back in the day and now just That's to true. be who we are for you to kick, 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 kick? That shit ain't funny because I can't say we did it to a white woman or a white man. You be dead. And this is not a black woman being angry. This is a black woman just telling you the truth. That's true. We're sick of it. And then they come to us, run to us, after y'all did it. They do. That's true. A uh, hurt, That's true. unhealed, traumatized, and everything else between. That's true. I don't think y'all know the, the, the meaning of when you dehumanize a soul. And it's not funny. Ain't nothing cute about that. And I'm not getting this towards you, but y'all need to understand that. This is me saying that. And there are white women I know that genuinely love black men, men, women and men and mean it. And they're behind us every year. They act the rallies. They are doing things, supporting us. They're in NAACP trying to be involved. You want to do something for us? Do that. Love you. Bye. The fact that I can't come on here and say that I love black men. Are you achieving the results you want as a Forex trader? Don't worry, it's not your fault. And posts like that are why I will always side-eye white women that come out their mouth and say, oh, I can't be racist, I have a black baby dad, I have a black boyfriend. You can very much so be pro-black man and anti-black woman. You see it every day. What really threw me off was that she was actively playing into the triangulation 
that black men like to use non-black women for. Like, she started the video like, if I were to say, you know, I love black women, nobody would say anything. But when I say I love black men, it's all this kickback. Girl, black women have been getting bashed by all groups, including black men, since forever. So, yeah, when the reverse comes about and we're actually being uplifted, why would there be any kickback? And that wasn't the only time she mentioned black women in the video. She also mentioned something about black women being mad that they're stealing our men. And it's just like, that's why black women be side-eyeing these interracial relationships because they just can't seem to exist in bliss without bringing up black women or using us to triangulate in some capacity. It's really weird. So she also goes on to say that black men are the kindest, they are the nicest, um, they are totally villainized and victimized in this society. Um, she understands racism and she understands how, you know, white people play into that. I'm like, okay, you have a grasp of that, but do you know what misogyny war is, girl? So you can grasp racism is causing discrimination against black men. So can you grasp that that same racism is affecting black women coupled with misogyny? Because we live in a patriarchal society. So black women are facing both racism and misogyny at the same time, which would mean that black men experience a level of privilege in a patriarchal society. And I'm glad that you've had a great experience with black men, but what we're not going to do is just totally gaslight the fact that the black femicide rate is out of control at this time. So I'm not sure if she's fully aware of the harm that she's perpetuating. And, you know, if she was just someone that was outright like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a pro-black male girl, have your day, have fun, but don't claim to be pro-black and an ally to all black people when you're okay with some level of harm to the women in that community black men would because at least black men understand what it's like to be like sexualized and so i just have a question i know you're saying that um with white men you feel like you're often sexualized and objectified with black men which party would you say is objectifying and sexualizing them I, it definitely happens for sure for sure you know but um which party would you say because Ah, two plus two is equal in four. No, uh, I don't know. The math, the math is a little short today. The fact that I can't come on here and say that I love black men without there being an entire uproar. So my question comes: Why do you have to embrace your love for a specific demographic? Why are you pro black men and not pro black people? And it's crazy how the TikTok algorithm works. But I was literally just talking about this. How weird I think it is. To do stuff like this whether it's a black man or a black woman whether it's a white man or a white woman doing it fetishizing black people is so damn weird do you know how many posts i come across that's in true. a day that's true of that's women true. talking about oh i love black men with dreads i should have known he was a red flag he was a dark-skinned black man with dreads do you not realize how inherently harmful this is to our people that's why people have such an uproar about it. And you say that you don't see the uproar when people come on here praising black women. Let me be the first to tell you that I'm one of those people that hate that. I hate the fetishization of our men and women. It's weird. We're not doll babies. We're not Barbies. We cannot be objectified by things that are in our culture. You're talking about people are still indoctrinated by the racial pseudoscience, whatever, whatever. But it's your same demographic of people upholding that. Mm. That's why. Mm. We're seeing that you have a strong love for a specific race is so weird to me. Regardless of the race, regardless of men and women, it's weird. You notice the patterns that the people who feel like they have to voice their love for black men so much, or even black women are usually the ones who will not have black men and women's backs mm. when shit really goes down in society against us. Mm. Especially black men. Yeah. Your video is extremely harmful to the black community, but especially black women. The fact that I can't come on here and say that I love black men 
without there being an entire uproar. I sat there and I watched her video. I didn't watch the whole thing, so I really don't know what else she said, but then there was this energy to her. It's this thing that I noticed that a lot of white women carry about them. Black men are not puppies on the street in need of saving. Okay, your savior complex is not needed. <laughs> and honestly, that's part of the problem. It absolutely is. Save your tears. I'm not going to say save your love because love is love. It's a beautiful thing. But just make sure that you're coming from a, a good place and not a white to save your place, okay? That's, that's how half of the world was colonized. Black men don't need your saving. That's it.